Hello Aqua friends, welcome to my channel. My name's Nicole and today we are going to make a snowy mountain that is in the shade. So I start off with my lightest colors and I'm doing the sunset. For the sunset I used quinacridone scarlet and some iso yellow. And I'm leaving space for the wispy clouds. The blue that I'm using is a marine blue and uh, indigo for the clouds that are in the shadow. Kind of made my own purple by mixing up the reds that I have in my palette uh, with um, some cobalt blue. So once that dries, I'm doing the very distant mountains where the reflection of the sun uh, is coming through the plateau there. And to get that effect, I am lifting some light. Heading in a little more warmth there. Lifting. Putting in my purples, like I said, I'm just trying to use, I have so much paint in so many different palettes. <laughs> that I'm just going to use the colors I have to, uh, you know, waste not, want not. The watercolors are uh, expensive, professional watercolors, so you want to use up as much as you can. So those distant um, mountains have a lot of purple hue to them, so I am adding a glaze over that. And getting that purple in there a little bit more. Now the foreground of these mountains is in the sun and they're very purple in color. They have a lot of pink undertones. And so I just start with the colors I see first, which is my pinks. And so I'm dropping that in. I'm using some quinacridone red with, I mix a little bit of blue to make myself a purple. Then I'm just increasing the blue to get a very nice violet. And while it's wet, you can lift up to make the snow drift effects. So basically you're just adding more paint and you can take away paint by using a damp brush to lift the paint. Once that dries, the fun part is doing the mid ground of this painting which is very teal as you can tell from the reference photo and there's a lot of dry brushing we're gonna have a lot of fun doing this I have a lot of interesting hacks for you to try <laughs> so I'm using my marine blue as well as like the a phthalo blue yellow shade would also work really well in here or a peacock blue and while it's still wet, I am adding some Perusian blue for where the different shadows are going to be going and just going over the different peaks of the mountain. Adding in my blue in the foreground as well. This is Perusian blue and some indigo that I'm using. There is sort of like this little lake in the middle of this mountain here with a very, very dark borders that I'm filling in. So now comes my dry brushing techniques that I do. So I make sure that my brush is really dry. And as your paper is drying and you use the side of your brush, you will just get the texture of the toothiness of your paper, which makes really, really cool distant effects, different rock effects, getting in all those little edges. So I'm adding all those textures for the mountain, I'm going back over and I'm adding a darker very concentrated amount of paint here and doing the same sort of dry brush effect by holding my brush 
to the side to get that toothiness of the paper. I also am using a palette knife for the darkest parts. I just take the paint straight off of uh, my tube of watercolor paint and get a really good amount for those darkest areas. And the palette knife makes that same sort of texture with picking up the tooth grain of your paper. So I, when I'm using that palette knife, I am holding it on a slant and pushing down and sliding it down so the paint transfers to the paper. And I'm using a very dry brush, as you could tell, <laughs> and adding in more texture to those mountains. And you see how I'm just building things up slowly that you don't want to put too much paint on your palette knife. You want to be skimpy on that so that you don't end up with a big glob of paint. So you're basically building up your values of these ridges slowly and so that you have a nice transition. And there's some rocky areas in the foreground on the light part of the mountain. So in this layer, I'm just concentrating on building up texture. Once that dries, I am putting a glaze of some more blue, which is the indigo, into the background just to darken that up. Now comes the fun part, is putting wet on dry with your marine blue and getting the shadows of that mid-ground in there, which is so much fun. It just really, really pops when you start doing that. It's also activating the layer of all the texture that we just built up and it's smoothing that out a little bit and just kind of adds to these shadowed areas. Adding in a little bit more blue into the foreground, getting that transition from the light to the shadow. And that is it folks. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today and let me know in the comments what you think about this dry brushing technique. Bye for now. See you next week.